I am Dr. Manoharan, consultant nephrologist working in Columbasia Hospital. Yes, uh, sometimes we blood, transfuse blood to these patients on an hemodialysis. At the initial stage when the hemoglobin is very low, which, which cannot be brought up by uh, whatever the EPO which is available in the market. And if the patient is a compliant who follows regularly with the nephrologist, their hemo hemoglobin can be maintained even from the CKD stage 1 or 3 or 4, 2. I think once they start on EPO, their hemoglobin can be maintained and once they go on dialysis, it can be maintained with the drugs. But some patients who do not follow, their hemoglobin will be pretty low when on initiation of dialysis. That moment of time, definitely they require a blood transfusion to bring up the hemoglobin immediately and then later on to start them on erythropoietin. Normally available uh, in the market is erythropoietin as well as the darbopoietin which is little long acting compared to uh, erythropoietin which is short acting and both have a same advantage and disadvantage where it has an improving the hemoglobin. Other causes of anemia in dialysis is basically iron deficiency. People who are having a kidney failure do not really intake, intake is very poor and their absorption of iron is very low. So hence, we have to correct that iron before even to start with erythropoietin or the darbopoietin to act on that. So then only the hemoglobin can be maintained and hemoglobin normally maintained between around 11 to 12 on these patients because more than 12 again it can cause an hypertension and uh, increased morbidity. So we cannot maintain them as a normal population. To some extent they will get a good quality of life to maintain hemoglobin. And other causes like vitamin B12 have to be ruled out and if they have an, any infection in their body, the EPO will not respond in them. So hence we have to rule out some infections and treat them properly at the initial stage and then take them forward on with erythropoietin.